Hey guys, it's Brie and today I'm going to be kind of following up on my forensic anthropology video that I did a couple weeks ago and talking about just broadly forensic books. So I did get my bachelor's degree in forensic anthropology from University of Montana. The degree is anthropology specialization in forensic anthropology. But at the same time, because I it was kind of a happy accident, ended up taking enough classes to also get a forensic studies certificate. So these are some books that are a little more related to that to kind of see what you can also study if you're maybe not super into the bones part but you want to be involved in that world somehow. Cool. Alright, so this first one is kind of a broadly speaking not necessarily forensics but if you are going to go into forensic science or any of the subfields you do have to understand criminal justice. Uh, just the system in general. This was Introduction to Criminal Justice. I have the seventh edition. It's probably updated since then because I graduated almost six years ago. So it's probably updated by now. Uh, Robert Baum and Keith Haley. You can see I took a lot of notes. This was one of my online classes I took over the summer. I didn't like this book, but it had more to do with the class than anything. This book was crazy. But this kind of covers just like ethics and the basics of criminal justice. Clarifying myths about the system, uh, talking about high profile cases, uh, I think I said ethics, research, statistics, uh, so there's a little bit about prison designs in here, why certain ones were the way they were, how they've changed throughout time. So this is just kind of a primer which if you're looking into it there's probably other books but this is the one that I had to read. I found parts of it interesting, but it is just a basic textbook. Now this one was given to me as a gift actually by one of my uncles. The Crime Scene, How Forensic Science Works. So this goes through, it's kind of a cool format. You have pictures, you have like little case notes, uh, frequently asked questions, they'll put in little case studies throughout. It's not necessarily set up like a textbook and it just goes through how do you process a scene. Um, how do you respond at the scene? What's happening in the laboratory? Court aspects and things like that. So it's very broad covering. And there are some pictures. I read most of this. Uh, it talks about autopsy tools even. And it's just a good broad, are you interested in forensic studies? Then maybe check this one out. Read a sample. Is it, see if it's what you're looking for. You don't have to be super knowledgeable to get into this one. It is pretty beginner friendly. One that's a little more advanced is Advanced Forensic Science Series, The Forensic Pathology Book. This covers basically what a medical examiner would do. Doing autopsies and things like that shows if you're squeamish, don't get this. <laughs> there are full color photos of pretty horrific injuries uh, and uh, to people that are deceased. So if you're squeamish, maybe skip this one. But this is actually a really good series depending on what you're into. There is a forensic anthropology one that I've been eyeballing. I didn't read this one in school. I actually got it afterwards to read. And there's a chemistry one. There's a biology one. There's quite a few. I should list some more. That might be helpful. Yes, Forensic Fingerprints, Firearms, and Tool Mark Examination, which doesn't sound interesting, but it actually is a really cool thing to look into. Uh, I enjoyed that part of some of my classes. Uh, biology, Chemistry, Professional Issues like Ethics and things that you may have to face in the field, Materials Analysis, Forensic Anthropology, yes, Forensic Engineering, which if you're into engineering, um, Behavioral Analysis, that one's really cool, Digital and Documents, Forensic Toxicology and Drugs, which is very popular, high demand, obviously. Um, yeah, but this one's great. Talks about autopsies, basics, ethics, uh, what you're looking at, it, how to identify different injuries, things like that. Super interesting if you're into very tech, technically, tech, if you're into very uh, technical, books. This is actually a really great one to pick up or any of the series. Check them out. Uh, they are really expensive so I recommend getting a used copy. I got this for... 
I got this for less than $40, but I think brand new it was twice that, if not more. So good series there. Uh, the Science of Crime Scenes, this kind of couples well with the crime scene, how forensic science works, but is a little more academic in a textbook type format. Obviously it's from academic press. And it just goes through, um, I'll go through some of the chapters for you. Uh, from scene to laboratory to court, what does each one's function during the process? Uh, what is a crime scene technically? Because it's not just necessarily a horrific crime. It could be something very simple. Uh, crime scene intelligence, connecting people, things, and places. Uh, personnel and procedures, like who's first on scene, securing a scene, processing the scene, keeping it secure, uh, logs, things like that. Uh, what about people that aren't on your forensics team? How do you get them in the scene? Where should they be? Where shouldn't they be? Things like that. Uh, freezing the scene, recognize, recover, and record. Talks about that. Chain of custody, big deal. Uh, you have to know. When was it recovered? Who was it recovered by? Who did it go to then? Blah, 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 because that all comes up in court. Uh, recording the scene, sketching, photography, and video. I took a couple photography, the photography was pretty big in some of my classes, as well as sketching to scale, which uh, get some grid paper and start learning how to do scale, because that's a big thing in the classes that I took. And it's kind of a pain when you first start learning, but it can be really fun to draw things to scale. Uh, detection and reconstruction, how do you find the evidence, what is evidence, things like that, which is a big deal in a lot of my forensic anthropology books. Uh, new vegetation growth, weird vegetation growth, uh, disturbances in the ground, things like that. Detecting, collection, preserving, because uh, temperature specific items obviously you need to be careful with or things that are sensitive to other factors. Submitting evidence to the lab, what is your proper procedures, uh, lab safety, all the different kinds of evidence that you can submit, which there's way more than you think. Uh, then there's actually a section on disasters and mass fatalities, so like a plane crash, for example, that would be different than a burglary. You're going to be collecting different kinds of evidence, you're going to be exposed to different elements, uh, possibly different uh, hazards. So talking through that, is that all? Oh, uh, underground crime scenes, obviously that's gonna be like burials, things like that. And then also underwater. So uh, I don't know if this book talks about it, but I remember one of my classes was talking about cadaver dogs. Some can detect the smell of decomp from the surface of the water if the body is under the water. So that was an interesting one that I actually learned in my it wasn't my fundamentals of forensic science class. It was another forensic science class. It was with Professor Kerr. I don't remember the name of the class. It's been a while. All right, and then the last book that is just a really good, like gives you phrases, definition, moves on. It's pretty basic. It's probably getting a little old at this point, uh, but it just explains all the different aspects is a survey of the forensic sciences by Randall Skelton, which if you are at UM or plan on going there, he is or was at least a professor there when I was there. He wrote this book for his class. It's intentionally not super expensive. It's actually one of the cheaper ones that you can get. Uh, there are some typos. He wrote it himself and self-published it. There, It's not unreadable by any means though. Just be aware if you're going through that there might be some issues here and there, but they're not terrible. There's a couple pictures, but it is definitely text heavy, but the font is a decent size. I can read it without my glasses on. So, wow, that was hard. So my edition is from 2010. So he, there may be a new edition or copyright 2011. So it's some of the stuff might be a little bit older because obviously science changes so quickly and I was a student getting on a little while ago. So there's probably new editions of all the books that I've just mentioned. These are just the ones that I read when I was a student. Uh, chapter one, introduction to forensic sciences, the forensic scientist, a classification by where you find them. So somebody might be a forensic scientist that you didn't even think about. Basic science, the scientific method. So yeah, this one goes really far back, 
goes on to advanced topics such as drug and drug testing, forensic chemistry and toxicology. We talk about DNA, which is a big deal in physical anthropology. I'll go over those books in a different video. Forensic odontology, your teeth. Uh, forensic entomology, botany, and geology. I always thought forensic botany was really interesting. That's the plants. Um, <laughs> explosives, computer forensics, computer network security, forensic psychology, which is also super interesting. So this is just like, you know you want to be in forensics. You don't really know where to start. This kind of explains everything. It's a big floppy book. Not very expensive. I don't have my phone, but I think I got it used for very, very little. But I will put all these books down below. These are just five that I have from my years as a student. I like them all. They're pretty interesting. Uh, if you're looking for a beginner level, I would probably, use, and you're not a student, one of these two, maybe this one to start. And then this one's really good. If you're a little more advanced, maybe you're already gone through school or you're in school, um, this series is really good. It is a little technical though, so if you're not comfortable with some of the terms, it might be a little bit of a slower read, but this one's a good, all-encompassing, super specific series. Yeah, those are the books. So uh, happy reading, guys, and see you in the next one.